Spencer's Mountain is a drama-slash-family film from 1963. Henry Fonda and Maureen O'Hara play a couple who live in the Grand Teton Mountains with their large family. The Spencer dynasty has been there for generations, and they're all proud of their heritage. Their oldest son, played by James MacArthur, has just graduated high school and is expected to settle down in the mountains, too. However, MacArthur wants to go to college and pursue a more academic career. Torn between family and his own desires, MacArthur struggles to figure out which path he should take. There are some other subplots that intertwine throughout the film, but this is the basic through line that helps make the whole movie cohesive. Some of you might be thinking, wait a second, a large family living in the mountains dealing with daily struggles? Isn't that the Waltons? Well, you'd be correct. This movie and its original book were the basis for the long-running TV series, The Waltons. And if you watch the film, you'll notice some similarities along the way. One of the more notable ones is that, in The Waltons, there was John Sr. and John Boy. Here, there's Clay Sr. and Clay Boy. But I digress. Back to the movie. The film looks gorgeous, taking full advantage of its location in the Grand Tetons. They're so vast that you could get lost staring into the distance. So much so that you often forget what time frame this takes place in. What I mean is, I didn't realize this took place in the movie's contemporary time. I thought it took place in the 30s. Eh, I guess that's the Walton's fault. Everything just has an old-timey feel, and you don't see too many 60s characteristics. To be fair, there are moments where they go into more populated areas, but it seems like they're crossing into a completely different world. This contrast helps to emphasize the different lifestyle dispensers lead, and it reinforces how important their family tradition is. The grandeur of the landscape is further complemented by the lovely score by Max Steiner. It does a great job capturing both the splendor and immensity of the mountains. But really, the strongest part of the movie is the family dynamic. I've I noticed a lot of movies from the golden age of Hollywood weren't the best at capturing this. They would often hobble together a group of actors and say, this is a family, but they would never feel like one. They always felt like, well, a group of actors. Here, it genuinely feels like Maureen O'Hara and Henry Fonda have brought up these kids together. The way they speak to the children feels authentic. It doesn't feel cookie cutter where the children make nothing but mistakes and the adults know exactly how to solve each of their issues. There's a part where James MacArthur spends a day in the wilderness with a girl he likes, and he comes home with a really bad sunburn all over the upper half of his body. His parents have their suspicions of what happened, and Fonda is the one who has to bring up the burning question, no pun intended, of why he had his shirt off all day. The conversation is awkward for both dad and son, and Fonda doesn't really know what to say at first. He takes his time to choose the precise words to say because it's a complicated matter. By the end, Fonda is teasing his son, and MacArthur feels his dad is starting to see him as an adult. The younger kids act authentic too. Most of the time they're running around in the background, not even registering the problems the adults are talking about. However, one of the kids, played by Veronica Cartwright, is often spying on the adults and older kids. She's at that age where she's starting to be curious about adult life, and I think it's something almost everyone goes through at one point. I honestly can't think of too many movies that depict this side of childhood, and it's a welcomed representation. The cast is a powerhouse of memorable actors. Henry Fonda and Maureen O'Hara have a very familiar dynamic and bring some real depth to their characters. Fonda is a hard-headed lumberjack who often uses crass language to express himself. O'Hara is a God-fearing woman who feels her and her family should always strive to better themselves. Although they're complete opposites, you can sense an endearing love between them. And it's that last part that makes their relationship stand out compared to other bickering couples in movies. It doesn't feel like a bit they do for laughs. They come off as two well-rounded people who have spent so much time together that they sometimes get on each other's nerves. Another welcomed addition to the cast is Donald Crisp as the patriarch of the family. This was Crisp's last acting role, and it's a great one to end on. Crisp is soft-spoken and nostalgic for the past. You can tell he's enjoying life in his twilight years, but he'd give anything to go back and do it over again. I can't help but smile every time he's on screen. He's such a pleasant presence in the film, and you can tell he's grateful for the legacy he's left behind. Another standout is Wally Cox as the local preacher. He's not the usual wise religious man. He has some personality to him. He's always butting heads with Fonda's character because Fonda is the only one in his family who doesn't go to church every Sunday. You get a sense that even though Fonda keeps refusing to go, Cox respects Fonda's choice, but that won't stop him from bringing it up any chance he gets. I enjoy how they poke fun at each other whilst also staying civil, but the actor I'd like to highlight is James MacArthur. In a sense, he's torn between two lives, the one he wants to live and the one he's expected to live. Not only that, but he's torn between the repercussions of both lives. If he chooses to leave, he feels like he's letting his family down, but if he chooses to stay, he'll always be tormented by the what-ifs. MacArthur does a great job of portraying this dilemma on screen. It always feels like there's a million thoughts racing through his mind, and he's trying to sort them out. Part of that is due to the expressiveness of his eyes. MacArthur really had a talent for getting across a myriad of emotions in one look. There's also this endearing quality to 
him that's hard to describe. Some of my favorite scenes are when he's interacting with his younger siblings. You can tell he's trying to act like a third parent to them, but they still get on his nerves, and he often slips back into sibling bickering. MacArthur does a splendid job making you root for him the whole movie, and it makes me wish there was a sequel that took place after his college years. But if you want more of this story, just watch The Waltons. It has a lot of the same qualities. James MacArthur was born December 8th, 1937 in Los Angeles. He was placed at an orphanage at a young age, and was adopted by playwright Charles MacArthur and his wife, two-time Oscar-winning actress Helen Hayes. He fell into acting due to his mother and adopted sisters. Helen Hayes brought him onto a radio show when he was nine years old, making his acting debut. However, the acting bug didn't bite until the following year, in 1949, when he made his stage debut in a theater company performance of The Corn is Green. He was only supposed to stay on for two weeks, but his sister, who was also in the cast, convinced him and the managers to let him be a part of the company. He had sporadic roles in television and stage, but his breakthrough came in 1958, when Walt Disney personally picked him to star in the live-action film The Light in the Forest. He made three more movies for Disney, Swiss Family Robinson, which is one of the first old movies I'd ever seen, Kidnapped, and Third Man on the Mountain, the movie where the Matterhorn bobsled ride at Disneyland comes from. All of these titles are staples of the classic live-action era of Disney films. After those films, MacArthur became one of the most in-demand young actors in Hollywood. He was able to split his time between movies, TV, and Broadway. Then, in 1968, he was cast in probably his most recognizable role, Dano, in Hawaii Five-O. The show ran from 1968 to 1980, and held the record for longest-running police drama until Law & Order beat it in 2002. Wow, he has a connection to two highly successful TV shows. After Hawaii Five-0 went off the air, MacArthur chose to take roles sparingly, and tried to focus more time on different avenues. He started to direct plays, invested in a telephone answering machine business, and started appearing on many interview programs. He was scheduled to make a cameo in the equally successful revival of Hawaii Five-0 in the early 2010s, but he passed away before it could happen. He died on October 28, 2010. He was 70 two years old. So, honestly, out of everyone I'm spotlighting this month, he actually achieved some stardom. But I've always wondered why people like Tab Hunter or Richard Chamberlain are better known. I guess it really just boils down to projects he was a part of. Although he's arguably the lead in Spencer's Mountain, he's in the shadow of three Hollywood legends, Henry Fonda, Maureen O'Hara, and Donald Crisp. So, if you want to rediscover a young star of Hollywood, or discover the family that inspired a very successful TV show, then I highly recommend Spencer's Mountain.